Where do you see things changing now? Where, where do you see things going in the next call it 12, 12 months or so, maybe 18? It's, I th- change takes longer than that. It's much more cyclical. I think in the long run, there'll be more things going on in a bowling center. And we have escape rooms and all the other stuff. And we have this great big piece of property in Lakeland, Florida, where the bowling center is. And I, we said, should we put a miniature golf course out there? And then someone else said, should we put a, should we put car wash? Should we put uh, volleyball? What should we, we haven't done anything, but we know that we should have other avenues of revenue. And what I thought of thinking, living through COVID, I felt that there would be a great boom of philosophical changes. People would come up with eight of things as a result of that. Thank you. I, though I can't cite it, some of the bigger companies that are in Mubix, Stars and Strikes, and all those big guys, they're doing a great job of bringing in people, letting them enjoy bowling, different than my Monday night five-man league. Yeah, right. Uh, but enjoying it nonetheless. Uh, so so I, what do I see? I see recreational bowling. If it continues, it'll be a boom. It'll be people going four times a year with a higher ticket price and yeah. not Worried there's a two dollars or nine dollars, but I see those changes happening. I also see the guys who can't change going away. So globally, and this is not a twelve month thing. Yes, yeah. the survival of the fittest, and those who keep it clean, keep it friendly, keep it professional, will succeed, and they'll keep doing well. And there right. are many who do, including the big guys. You you, you can't escape from saying. My God, one thing in our strategic plan that we did talk about in the 80s was only the television rights. And look who has the television rights, mm-hmm. right? That's a pretty powerful tool. And my hat's off to Tom Shannon for his wisdom and all those things. Yeah. But I'm good at what I do, and I'm different. I offer a different kind of uh, business model, if you call it that. I'm not going to give up on league bowling. I'm not going to give up on the sport. You, you may or may not know that a year and a half ago, we hired Amaletto Monticelli, who's a 20-time PBA winner, my employee, and he runs our Department of Skill Improvement. Very cool. Yeah. So so I applied I about that. Code, right? 1K health benefits to this wonderful, nice, great guy who I've known since the day he started. In those days kiss me on both cheeks. Now I say it's in the handbook. It can't kiss me. But it's all about if you take our traditional sense, right? If people improve their skill, they'll buy more games. So skill improvement equates to more paid games. Yes. There's some self-interest, but one, I love having him under our roof. And there is some cost to it. But I have people who are thanking me for it. We bring them to New York twice a year. Every hour session is booked. Yeah. He's charming, first of all. He has this nice accent. You got to listen a little harder, but he's very good at making you throw that ball better the next shot than you did the last shot. Yeah. So, So I'm all over the place, right? I care about the future. I care about all this, but I also care about the sport. Right. Because that's who brought us here. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to do two and a half times open play, three times open play. Doesn't mean I'm not going to modify my Friday and Saturday night level of business. I don't know too many parties that'll go on Wednesday at five thirty. Right. There'll be some, but I don't. I'm not. Our demographics don't allow that. Maybe if I was still in Brooklyn, I could get that done. But right. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah, it's a balancing act, and I think. When you can get both sides to realize that, then that's when you really have that harmony. Is that's sort of where we are. We're like, think of that song, Both Sides Now, right? And <laughs> we enjoy parts of the catering side, parts of the recreational side, and the skill side. Yeah, so last question I had about that skill side. Is that something where they have to book a appointment with him, or is that provided for them to try to increase their skill? Or how does that work? I mean, we've kind of, we just had this idea, and we let it take a life of its own. It's now become four or five or six lessons a day. We do some group things. We have them involved in the youth programs in Florida. We, we see it 
if we could create league programs that use him, tournaments that could use him. I beat, I beat Amuleto. You know what Amuleto means? It means no. Hamlet, means Hamlet on the lanes. He's yeah. a charming, good guy. And so, so here we are. We're pushing that. But how else could we use him? We do some group lessons. And we're, he's taking over our pro shops as we speak. So there'll be a whole Amaletto maple family center relationship as time goes on. Yeah. Very cool. I like that as a concept. A salute to the sport. That's but yeah, that's a perfect. Those guys with those boxes of Pampers, one of them wanted <laughs> yeah. to beat the other. Took that out with Amaletto, he would have ripped them. <laughs> right. Exactly. They would have been going down to meet with them to get a few pins extra. <laughs> hey, did you like this video? Great. We make 10 of them a week. Subscribe to learn more and keep learning about what's working in the industry. Talk to you then.